There it is guys, after a very long period of waiting, we finally get a trailer for the upcoming gothic remake. I thought it'd be fun to take a look at it and pick it apart with a ridiculous level of scrutiny and background for everything that we see, so if some of this stuff seems minor or insignificant to you, then in all likelihood you are not a real gothic fan. It is, but hear me out. Gothic is a game that's absolutely unrivaled by most modern RPGs in many aspects, but perhaps the most important one is its atmosphere. The world of Gothic is, well, very well matched with its name. It's gritty, bleak and realistic. It's not a world of mighty warriors fighting evil wizards to save a princess. It's a world where a harsh situation forces the monarch to send criminals, regardless of the severity of their crime, into slave labor in what is essentially a medieval prison colony. Without a way in or out, any hope of pardon, any hope of escape, or any hope at all for most people. Literally one of the first things we find out in the game is that most of the folk in the colony do not own anything at all and will gladly kill you for an old pickaxe. The colony is exactly what you would imagine a medieval prison to be like. The prisoners bully and extort and yes, even kill one another. Most folk are forced into back-breaking work in the mines, they wear ragged clothes and the only pleasure they have in life is alcohol and poorly drawn pornographic sketches. We find out in a conversation with one of them that some of the most expensive items are consumables. Bread, cheese, ham and especially beer and wine. As someone living in a post-communist country, I can relate. Where I'm going with this long men style rant is, some of the stuff I'm going to tell you about may not seem all that important at first, but all of this adds up. And it adds up into one of the most atmospheric games ever made that many AAA productions still can catch up to in certain aspects. Without dragging this on even more, let's begin. First of all, I do find it a bit funny that instead of a Peggy 18, or rated M for mature, we are greeted by a note saying that the product may contain content inappropriate for children. I mean, the original Gothic only contains slavery, themes of rape and sexual slavery, murder, drone nudity, drug use, mental health issues and mentions of bestiality, which, as far as I can tell, don't exactly fall into safe for kids category. But the game is probably still pending a rating by the ESRB and Peggy, so other than the mild amusement, nothing to worry about here. As we'll see later, the game does not hold back, at least in certain aspects. The first thing that we see in the trailer is this little fella, the meatbag. And yes, we are going to talk in detail about the meatbag. Before any of you groan or click a dislike, not that it really matters anymore, thanks YouTube, because of an idea of me discussing this little pest in finer details, let me explain why I find him to be important and also why he's the first thing that we see in this trailer. In most games, mobs perform one of three basic functions. They can be enemies, meant to provide you with combat encounters and loot drops, as well as the opportunity to gain experience. They can be passive mobs, meant to provide you with some easy loot and perhaps even crafting ingredients. And then there are the ambient mobs, whose primary or exclusive purpose in the game is simply to make the world more believable. The meat bug is unique in the fact that despite being an oversized insect, which in most games would be an enemy type, you can find oversized bugs in Silent Hill 4, Fallout games, Zelda games or RPGs in general, including bloodflies in Gothic itself. Meatbug is instead both a passive and ambient mob, and it's pretty important to the world building of Gothic. But Audio Man, I hear you say. Isn't it just a random mob that you kill for 10 XP? Well, my precocious viewer, the purpose of the meat bug is a little bit more important than that. First of all, the meatbag is the first mob that you encounter in the game, so it serves as a bit of a tutorial for new players on how to enter the combat mode and punch. Not that it's easy in the original, because infamously the meatbag's small hitbox makes it difficult for new players to hit. But fine, a small quirk of the combat engine. Second of all, the progression in Gothic was always a very meaningful part of the game, and its most important aspect is making you feel weak and fragile in the beginning and powerful and mighty near the end of the game. As such, you begin by killing small, weak, and in this case, defenseless creatures such as the meatbugs. Then you progress to young scavengers and young mole rats, and then you progress to more powerful enemies. The meatbug is there to both inform you on how inexperienced in combat you are, and to provide you with that little bit of experience that you'll desperately need at the start of the game. Another purpose of our little meaty friend is world building. The colony is filthy and its inhabitants are desperate. The only loot that the meat bug provides you with is, well, it's meat, which you may be forced to eat if you get hurt on your way to the old camp. Once you arrive there, one of the first people you'll meet, Snuff, will explain to you that he has just come up with a brand new cooking recipe, a stew with meat bugs and mushrooms. 
This little interaction also allows you to define the nameless hero that you're playing as a little more, since you can either react with revulsion, as someone from the outside world most likely would, or say that it sounds nice trying to get on the local folks' good side. I still remember this dialogue, because when you played Gothic back in the day as a young lad or lass, it really felt like being thrown into a nasty brand new school and trying to make friends there. Furthermore, Snuff tells you that you can find the meat bags in places that are filthy, and so you explore more of the camp, looking for such places. Without a compass, without an inbuilt map, without a quest marker treating you like a fool, and you find it all on your own. Another reason why this is important is because you get to see a dilapidated part of the camp, once again showing the world of Gothic in stark contrast to the beautiful architecture that you can find in works such as the Lord of the Rings. In other words, this tiny little creature which gets a solid kick in the trailer fulfills a lot of functions in the game. It teaches you the basics of combat, it provides you with precious experience, it informs you of the world you've entered, in which people live in squalor, and it adds life and atmosphere to sections of the map that might have otherwise been empty. Okay, are the new folk gone already? In any case, let's move on to things that are a little bit more important. The atmosphere and the presentation. As we can see, the color palette used here is appropriately bleak and closely matches the original, which is the key here because if there's one thing about us gothic fans, it's that the first two games have spoiled us rotten, and because of that we're really picky about this sort of thing. The prisoners are appropriately filthy, the entrance to the old mine is appropriately unattractive and uninviting. One of my major concerns regarding this project was the Warcraftization of the whole thing, by which I mean making everything grander, more decorated, more elaborate and generally more epic, which usually just means overdone these days. I am very happy to say that that doesn't seem to be the case here. Everything that we see on screen makes sense and very clearly uses the original as a blueprint while striking the right balance between classic gothic's desolation and adding more details on a high definition engine. It's done rather tastefully and I'd be struggling to find anything of fault here. Also, as I mentioned earlier, one of the concerns that people had was that the game would be toned down for the modern audience, which neither played the original gothic nor ever will. And while it remains uncertain as to whether Alchemia is fully committed to preserving all of the heavier aspects of Gothic's setting, we can at least say with certainty that they didn't censor slavery. The orc slaves from the original are present. In fact, now there are more of them. And at one point we even see one of them being whipped. And here I have to stress something. If somewhere out there in the ether are people who are upset that the developers chose to preserve this aspect of the original game, those people are not mature enough to discuss heavy subject matter in any form of art. Another thing that you can instantly notice is that the entrance to the mine feels a lot busier than it did in the original. And while it makes sense, I do hope there are periods of time when it is empty, as the isolation of your travels was a big aspect of Gothic. Traveling to this location as a low-level character and entering this cave without seeing a human face anywhere certainly was a memorable moment. We can see, though with a hefty amount of motion blur, that the factions, the old camp guards and the temple guards from the camp in the marshes, were appropriate attires, though I would like to wait more for the official HD renders to judge whether they made a successful transition into this new engine, instead of judging it based upon a few blurry frames. Though I can say that, with the little glimpses that we do have, they don't look half bad. We certainly don't see any outrageous MMO type armor that would immediately destroy any attempt at crafting a realistic setting. Same goes for the few moments where we see the orc slaves, whose design seems to be largely inspired by the original, though again I would like to wait until we get a better look at them. One thing that I am not particularly happy about is that the diggers are not wearing their iconic pants and shoes, which may seem silly at first, until you realize that it was necessary equipment for their work. As explained by Swinney in the Free Mine, if a piece of magic ore fell on your bare foot, you'd end up crippled for the rest of your life. These little pieces of lore that you came to know by talking to various people were rather important for making the setting believable. Sweeney claims to be a damn good miner, and then he demonstrates it by pointing out the safety precautions that a good miner must undergo, which is also tied to you obtaining such outfit for yourself in order to pose as a mole and enter the new camp's tavern. It's all tied together and so these little things end up mattering quite a bit. At this point in the trailer we can hear a lot of the sounds from the original game, both ambient noise as well as the sounds of NPCs interacting with their environment. I was very happy to hear these, as one of Gothic's greatest strengths was its sound design, which seemed to perfectly match the gritty, dark and moody world that we had to explore. It may not seem like much, but when you hear these sounds that you listen to a lot in your youth, 
It really takes you back and makes you yearn for more. The inside of the cave looks almost as good as its outside, with only a very minor complaint which is mostly a pet peeve of mine. The mine is a tad too dark, and I know what some of you will say, but audio man, you just said that the world of gothic is dark and moody, so why do you complain about the darkness? Well, dear viewer, I don't complain about the darkness per se, but more about its distribution in the mine. The main shaft, which was the only fully safe place in the mine, at least by the standards of the colony, was relatively well lit and indicated areas that are free of monsters and safe to explore. Furthermore, the half-lit nature of it all was rather unique, and while the trailer footage is by no means bad, it simply changes the atmosphere of the old mine, though not to any significant or grating degree. I think the main shaft should be a tad brighter, in order to mark a clear difference between dangerous and safe areas, as well as to make it match the original in the ease of navigation. In the original game, you could get through pretty much the entire main shaft without a torch, and you really needed them for the darker, more dangerous side corridors. And it seems that here, you would need a torch pretty much throughout the entire mine. Still, it's a minor complaint, and it doesn't take away from the fact that the key layout of the mine seems to have been preserved, and it looks damn good in this translation. I especially like the fact that the magic ore veins actually glow blue, since we've already seen that sort of effect in places of large ore concentration before. It's a nice little detail, and it really adds to the mood of the place. And here we see another great little detail. One of the diggers falls down on the ground, presumably because of the exhaustion. It meshes nicely with what the diggers have been telling us throughout every conversation, complaining about their job, which is both ungrateful and backbreaking. They first mention it once you get to the old camp, and then, when you're sent into the old mine, you actually get to see it in the remake. Set up and pay off. Very nicely done. It's a rather small yet very fitting addition, and it makes me eager to see other areas where the NPC routines, already advanced in the base game, were improved. And finally, we get to the end of the trailer, where we see two diggers who decided to go rummage in the Minecrawler's lair. Now, I hope that this is meant to take place before the events of the game, because if not, then it will raise a lot of questions, such as... Why did Asgan allow them to enter? Why isn't the gate locked? Did the guards simply not notice the Minecrawler spewing out? However, for the purpose of ending the trailer on a bang and showcasing some action, we'll take it for what it is and conclude that, all things considered, the developers at Alchemy Interactive did a bang-up job. Overall, my thoughts on this first proper trailer are overwhelmingly positive. Granted, I do try to be cautious when it comes to remakes, remasters, reimaginings and other such things, due to how often the developers feel the need to correct things that they don't personally find appealing, without any respect for the original. However, it would seem that the developers at Alchemia hold the original in high regard, and do their absolute best to preserve its strengths. I can't wait to see more of these trailers, and that's it for today. I'm Audioman, and I'll hear you next time.